I'm Naisha McCauley, and you're watching AccessTV.org. Dedicated to the only serious choice, the gospel of Jesus Christ in music and the spoken word. You're watching Light Source Victory Television Live with me, your host, Pastor J. Stan McCauley, inviting you to sit back and relax for the next eight minutes as we continue our journey into the life-changing, life-giving, everlasting word of the Most High God. My friends, it's time for the eight-minute Bible study. Okay, so grab your Bible, your pencil, your paper, and all the things necessary in order to take the journey. Of course, we broadcast live from the greatest city on earth, Hartford, Connecticut, New England's rising star on Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, um, Facebook, and um, StumbleUpon, uh, all kinds of uh, social media. Okay, but uh, uh, but we're here, and of course, most importantly, on Access TV. Org. We're on channel 10. You can get caught up with all of the past 8-minute Bible studies. And of course, while you're at accesstv.org, check out all of the great programming uh, that we produce here at, at uh, your grassroots television network. Okay, let's get started. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, that's where we were when we were last together. We're talking about apostasy. Okay, apostasy. Someone asked me, you know, why, you, why do you talk so fast? Well, I don't really talk fast, but I talk fast during the 8-minute Bible study because if I talk twice as fast, I could get twice as much in. So instead of there being 8 minutes of Bible study, there's actually 16 minutes at my normal talking speed. All right, so let's get started. All right, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Now, <clears throat> verse 5, chapter 3, 2 Timothy, the apostates. Now, as we were reading out of the... Uh, Unger's Bible Dictionary yesterday when we were talking about apostasy. One thing that's important to note that you have to be connected to before you can separate from. You can't separate from something that you've never been connected to. So the apostate is somebody who turns away or lets loose, turning from to is like the opposite of repentance. In order to repent, you have to turn from to. It's a change in direction, not a change of attitude of the, of, 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 you, of the mind. It has to be backed up with an action. Okay, so it's like you decide you're no longer going to go south. So you just stop going south. But in order to get to where you need to go, you got to go north. Just because you stop going south doesn't mean that you're now heading north. So you have to turn from, with purpose, to something else. Well, the apostate is kind of turned from north, going to Christ, from being with Christ to a separation. It's a horrible, horrible thing to be in a state of, of, of apostasy. Because what will ultimately happen is God will give you over to a reprobate mind to believe the things that you think are so, to be so, even though they are not. Let's read verse five. We've got so much to go over on this subject, uh, but we've got nothing but time, all right? Eight minutes a day, you know? It's just time, that's all. Having a form of godliness, but denying, that, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with every diverse lust or desires, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Okay? Reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be made man shall be manifest unto all men as theirs was. Okay? So the the signs of apostasy. Alright. Know this that in the latter days perilous times shall come. Then verses two through four gives you the outward manifestation or characteristics or works of the apostate reprobate, reprobate mind. Now, when we go over these, think of these things in the context of the community of the church, all right? This is technical, okay? Words mean things. The community of the church. I purposely did not say Christian, so 
the community of the church. I use community on purpose. A community is a body of, or a group of individuals which is self-sustaining, self-educating, and self-policing. That means they correct themselves, they educate themselves, and they are sustained by the, 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 the community. So, uh, out called ones, ecclesia, which is a church in the, in the Greek. So, there are many out called ones that make up a particular body. So, here is a group of out called ones, and from out of that group, certain individuals depart from it. They're no longer part of the group. They're, they've become apostate or reprobate. How can you tell who those are? It's right here. They shall be lovers of their own selves. Okay, it's hard to stay connected to the body of Christ when you see yourself deified above everyone else in the body and above Christ. Covetous, all right? Boasters, proud, blasphemers disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers. Now I use natural affection on purpose. I'm not picking on homosexuals, all right? But it is what it is and it's a perfect example and there's a reason why it's a perfect example. Because when the body of Christ starts to embrace behavior that the Bible clearly says is inconsistent with the will of God, then you have a problem. I'm not talking about the world and man legislating whatever's the popular flavor of the day. Because, you know, one day it's against the law to go down, you know, the left side of the street. Two more years from now, it's the other side of the street. We have a, uh, the Affordable Health Care Act that was, it wasn't law a couple years ago. Now it's law. And there's a band of individuals who are trying to make it no longer the law. So men legislate laws according to their desires. The Word of God is not according to our desire. The Word of God is the written manifestation of the will of God so that we might be in compliance with what God says. So, generally speaking, the pushback from those who uh, embrace uh, the, uh, the normalization of homosexuality is that well the Bible is old-fashioned so there's no there's no debate as to where the Bible stands on homosexuality but there is great uh, um, debate within church circles in, in terms of uh, saying you know, well let me rephrase that when the church starts to normalize activity that the word says is wrong that's a sign of apostasy okay are we all on the same page I hope so. If so, watch it, like, and share it with friends and family. That's your part of this ministry. We'll see you tomorrow right here on the Evening Bible Study, okay? God bless you.